Hey YouTube, welcome back to My Financial Focus. In this video, I'm gonna talk about Avepoint, which recently came out with their earnings report of what came out to be negative five cents per share. And that unfortunately sent the stock price crumbling down from $9.25 per share down to what is now $7.35 per share. And some of my viewers were messaging me, asking me to talk about Avepoint and go into why that might have happened. So in this video, I'm going to do that. So before that starts, just make sure to leave a like on this video. It definitely helps this video get recommended to the YouTube algorithm. And let's get right into it. So for those watching this video who don't really know what Avepoint is, Avepoint is essentially the largest Microsoft 365 data management solutions SaaS provider, which is software as a solution. They provide data migration, data management, and data protection solutions all in one package. And they currently provide that to a customer base of about 8 million cloud users. Their business runs on a recurring revenue subscription-based business model, so they charge every month for their solutions. And then they've also recently begun to put more of an emphasis on expanding internationally by launching their global partner program, which they launched in the third quarter of 2021. Right here in this article, it talks a little bit about how Avepoint's stock dropped 10% in a week, taking one-year losses to 19%. So I'm just going to highlight some of the key points from this article that I found. In this paragraph right here, they talk about how basically there's an opportunity cost for investors who are cu currently holding on to Avepoint because not only are they incurring losses of 19% on their capital, but they're also not able to allocate their capital towards just investing in the overall market, which over the same period, the last 12 months, has increased by about 30%. So there's definitely an opportunity cost at the moment for holding on to Avepoint. But this article touches on later on how that might not be as big of a deal, but we'll get into that in a little bit. Right here, they talk about how Avepoint currently isn't profitable, but that their revenue is growing at a good clip and also how they believe that if the revenue keeps on growing, then at a certain point, the share price would likely follow. We can see that the increase in revenue in the last 12 months was about 27%, even though the earnings per share for the third quarter from their earnings report came out to be negative five cents per share. And this chart right here just shows a little bit of a visualization of their revenue against their earnings. We can see right here that their revenue has grown at a pretty consistent clip over the last couple of years, but also that their earnings have not yet broken a profit. And then right here, as I mentioned earlier, they start touching on a different perspective as to how we can see the drop in Avepoint's share price at the moment. They talk about how even though Avepoint is experiencing a decreasing share price at the moment, that sometimes in the past that different stocks show a couple of years of underperformance relative to the overall market, but that in the long term, growth stocks, especially smaller companies like Avepoint, could potentially outperform the market in the later years overall. But obviously, that's a risk that every investor has to decide whether or not they want to take for themselves. Right here, this is an article that talks about Avepoint's financial results for their third quarter and then also highlights some of their actual financial statements later on, which I'm going to analyze in detail after this. So we can see right here they talk about how for the 11th consecutive quarter, they recorded a record total revenue, and the third quarter came out to be $54 million, which resulted from a 79% year-over-year growth in their subscription revenue. We can see that for their total revenue, it was about 36% increase over year over the third quarter in 2020, and then their total annual recurring revenue came out to be 140. million. 7.5 million dollars in the third quarter but that being said although their revenue has been increasing right here they point out that their gap operating loss to their net income came out to be 28.7 million dollars as i mentioned earlier for their third quarter 2021 key highlights they launched their first global partner program so they're definitely putting more of an emphasis on providing their software solutions internationally which is definitely going to expand their customer base and increase their revenues as a result in the future and then they, in the third quarter, were also awarded a $37 million contract by Temasek to provide educational training management solutions to like 100,000 students with Temasek. So that $37 million is also going to contribute to an increase in their 2021 revenue at the end of the year. And then lastly, right here, they talk about their financial outlook for the fourth quarter of 2021. 
right here they talk about how they think that their total revenues are going to come out to be about 56 to 58 million dollars which is an increase of a couple million from the third quarter so that would make it their 12th consecutive record quarter in a row and then they also talk about how their total revenues for the year ending 2021 they expect to come out to be about 194 to 196 million dollars which i believe is up from 2020 when they reported revenues right when they went public of about 150 million dollars so that puts them ahead of a couple of their competitors and it definitely shows that their revenue is growing but we'll see how that affects their share price in the time to in the years to come and then right here we see this is their income statement and we can see that their total revenue has increased in the third quarter of 2020 to the third quarter of 2021 from 39 million dollars to 53 million dollars but that being said their net loss still came out to negative 9.7 million dollars which is down from negative 12.7 million dollars in 2020 but that being said their total loss for the entire year so far the nine months ending in the third quarter is larger than it was in 2020 that could be as a result of a pretty dramatic increase in their revenues but it's not usually a good sign to see that a company isn't profitable it's typical for smaller growth companies to not be profitable at the start but again that's just a risk that every investor is going to have to decide if they want to take for themselves right here in their balance sheet we see that their total assets have almost doubled from 2020 from 160 million dollars up to nearly 400 million dollars or more specifically 380 million dollars and then their total stockholders equity which was a deficiency in 2020 came out to $192 million negative in 2020, which is now a positive $247 million as of the third quarter ending in 2021. And then lastly, for their cash flow statement, we can see that they didn't provide, they didn't create positive cash flows from their operating activities in 2021. It came out to a negative $3.9 million, but it was a positive $11 million in 2020. And then they invested pretty heavily into purchase of property and equipment in 2021. And then they've also been raising a lot of money from, well, they raised a lot of money from their Apex shares. And then also their total net cash provided by financing activities came out to be $197 million, which was up from $22 million in 2020. So they're becoming more and more heavily reliant on debt and raising money through issuance of shares. So that may cause some dilution for current shareholders, which might also be contributing to the decline in the share price for Avepoint. So that's another risk that investors that are currently holding on to Avepoint are going to have to figure out if they want to take on, if they want to weather that storm. But like I said before, analysts are still currently holding on to a $14 price target for Avepoint. So time will tell to see whether or not the returns for Avepoint end up meeting expectations. And that's pretty much it for Avepoint's financial health at the moment and the reasons for why their share price is currently declining. We can see that their total cash on their balance sheet is sitting at $260 million. So they have a lot of cash that they're sitting on, which could be a good sign that they could use that in the future to capitalize on opportunities. But in some cases, it could also be a bad sign showing that they don't really have any opportunities to use their capital properly to increase their profits. So it really depends on whether or not Avepoint can identify opportunities that are going to have a substantial impact on an increase or growth in their company. But time will tell. I think that as of right now, Avepoint, it's a little uncertain just because, again, like I said before, they're unprofitable. But also, because their share price is so low, it could also present a buying opportunity. But I would definitely love to know what you guys think about Avepoint in the comments section below. Let me know. And if anyone provided, if anyone found any value from this video, then be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you guys haven't already. And I'll see everyone in the next one.